The psychodynamic or psychoanalytic approach, like we had talked about earlier, is going to be constructed by Freud. He's going to be the person that first kind of pushes this movement forward. His focus, again, is about the unconscious, unconscious motives, experiences that fuel the unconscious, childhood experiences, and how this all comes to kind of construct our personality and then can influence mental disorders. Other Neo-Freudians would be Jung and Adler and even Eric Erickson. And we'll spend more time talking about how they took this kind of concept of the unconscious and modified it and moved away from Freud. The sociocultural approach, or when we're talking about social psychology, we're looking at humans in the social context. So psychology looks at the individual, but the individual is influenced by the world around them. This is going to look at people when we come in contact with other cultures um, and other avenues of uh, the social sciences. You're going to look at global perspectives and anthropology studies. This will bring some of that context into psychology, but we're really going to look at the social psychologists like Ash and Milgram and even Zimbardo and how social situations influence the individual. Evolutionary psychology, or sociobiological, emerges in the 1980s, not a typo. Uh, this is based off of Darwin. Darwin is from the late 1800s. So this looks at natural selection, things that are present in all people. So reproductive success, natural selection, behaviors that we currently have because they allowed us to survive. This often has a lot of tie-in with genetics. So when we're talking about evolutionary psychology, and we will, it's always going to be based off of survival of the fittest or what traits we are now seeing in a next generation that allows a species to be successful. When we're looking at the subfields, these are really just better ways of talking about different occupations in psychology. You have clinical psychologists. They are going to be able to treat people with severe disorders. They're going to look at things like schizophrenia and dissociative identity disorder, personality disorders. Often these are going to be ones where people will get hospitalized for their disorders. They will often work hand in hand with doctors. If you have somebody who is a clinical psychologist and also simultaneously a medical doctor, that's where you get your psychiatrists. Counseling psychology is another field. It overlaps often with clinical. When we're looking at this, they're usually going to work with lower level um, disorders or lower level in severity of disorders. So anxiety, low level depression, things that are not worth, um, are not necessary for hospitalization. They're also going to work in other areas of counseling like family and marital issues. This may actually require someone to get a counseling degree, not necessarily a psychology degree. So be careful. There is difference, differences in um, counseling psychology, where they're using psychology as a heart to deal with these issues, and a counselor. Sometimes counselors get specific training to deal with very specific issues like family or marital issues. So there is overlap. Sometimes it can be distinctly different. School psychology, when we're talking about school psychologists, these are not going to be the people that come in and try to make sure that the emotional well-being of the student is there. They're actually there to test the students and make sure that they function best in the academic environment. So they'll help with emotional and social development, but we're talking about kids that may have emotional regulation problems that disrupt their academic learning. Um, kids that are autistic will go see a school psychologist. Um, this is also where you have kids that are working in the high and the low levels. You're gifted and then your kids that are at needs, your school psychologists are going to be the people who come in and test them. They will come in and they will essentially figure out where they are on different cognitive tests and then be able to place them in groups in comparison to their peers. IO psychology or industrial organizational psychology is a newer version of psychology. This one usually works with human resources departments. Anytime you talk about how people best function in a job or how they could get people to work to their optimal abilities, you're talking about IO psychology. That might even include things like architecture, making sure a building is structured properly so it has good flow and people want to work there. Here again, human resources, human factors, productivity, that's IO psychology. Forensic psychology, unfortunately, is not what most people think it is. Forensic psychology is anytime you take psychology and you bring it into the criminal justice kind of uh, sphere, into the legal system. So a forensic psychologist is more likely to deal with child custody hearings, making sure that the parents are fit or the child is going with the right parent, competency hearings, making sure the person is legally sane and 
Insanity is a legal term. It's actually not a psychological term. Uh, they'll look at violence and risk ass assessments. They may actually be there for involuntary commitment when someone is a danger to themselves or others, or when it comes to parole. They're not necessarily, well, not even remotely going to be the people running around catching serial killers every single weekday. Um, that's television making a job more than what it is. So the next slide is going to be where I kind of crush some hope and dreams. If this is what you think is a forensic psychologist, this is Hollywood making a job out of something that doesn't exist. First off, the girl in the blue dress would be fired because she's committed so many computer hacking crimes, it's unreal. Second, none of these people look like this. They look like normal people. They don't run into the building first, it's just, it's Hollywood. They also would be people that would come in and advise the local police department. They wouldn't take over, they wouldn't take on the jobs. Profilers are much different than what they have on these Hollywood TV shows. A true profiler looks at cases that have already been presented from police departments, and they're very rarely used, if ever, because most police departments have highly educated officers that are able to profile themselves. And profiles are literally statistics. So it would be more accurate if these were a bunch of people pouring over cases and compiling statistics. Their field officers would be the ones that would actually go and do the arrests and the interviews, not these guys. If we look at where most of the jobs are going to be centered, it's in clinical psychology, hospitals, universities. Um, some of the schools, we're talking about school psychology, not psychology within universities. Neuroscience is actually building, so that's actually a really kind of cool thing. So neuroscience, um, a couple years ago would have been at the less than one percentage, but it is definitely growing. It's a much larger field today than it was previously. Experimental psychology, this is where most of your professors come in and at the university level. Most professors are there because the school is allowing or funding their research. So they come in and they'll look at sensation, perception, educate, or I'm sorry, uh, learning, motivation, emotion. They're going to co conduct experiments because universities give them really good resources and a good student pool to kind of pull for for uh, different subjects. But NIH, the National Institute, um, of health has the National Institute of Mental Health attached to it, and they do experimental psychology as well. Social psychology we talked about, and again, stereotypes, group behavior, all of that, that's a are the focus of social psychology. Developmental psychology can run the gamut of all different types of kind of schools of psychology, behavioral, humanistic, etc. but really this is looking at from infancy to old age. And the focus now isn't just changes in early childhood, but now we're looking at old age because we have the baby boomers and we have such a large older population and the likelihood of generations now living into the hundreds more likely than any other generation before. We actually have to be interested about what happens in those later years with things like losing spouses and just overall happiness of life. Psychometric psychology is what I consider the most boring of all the psychologies. This is how do you construct a proper psychological test. Now, if you really enjoy writing a good test and making sure that it's valid and that it is reliable, then psychometric, the word metrics in there, psycho measurement, brain measurement, how do you measure these different abilities? That is your thing. For me, the idea of writing a test and then developing statistical techniques to analyze the test, that's just not as interesting. But there is a job out there for the people who love it. Sports psychology, this is a little different than what most people think. Most sports psychologists get hired in rehab facilities, and I mean like physical rehabilitation facilities. They're there to help athletes get their mind back into the game after an injury. They're there to help people who have become um, injured or disabled in some fashion kind of get back to normal functioning. You will see them at universities keeping uh, athletes motivated and kind of um, working through different things. And it's a pretty interesting field. Last slide for you guys, the overall setting that you're gonna find this. Most psychologists you're gonna see probably either in private practice, so these are gonna be counseling, maybe clinical, but probably more counseling psychologists. You're gonna see a large chunk of them at colleges and universities running experiments, and then another really large chunk in private practice. Government's gonna be smaller, elementary and secondary schools often share school psychologists, and then there's about 9% where you're gonna find them in other occupations. All right, so hopefully you guys have a pretty good run through. 
If you have any questions, please drop them down before you come to class. And we will kind of make sure that all of the other boxes are ticked off as far as knowing what the perspectives are, who the people are, and all of that additional information when I see you in class next. Thank you for your time.